Call of Duty is a series that needs no introduction. With the first game in the series being released back in 2003, it's had a yearly release since COD 2 in 2005, and only taking a break in 2023 to make 2022's Modern Warfare 2 a two year long lifespan. What's that? Oh, they already backtracked that statement. Well, never mind then. We've had a COD release every year since 2005. And ever since COD 4 Modern Warfare, the franchise has had a stranglehold on the FPS genre. I mean, look at the best-selling games year by year, starting with the first year that COD was number one with MW2. MW2 back in 2009, 2010 Black Ops, 2011 MW3, 2012 Black Ops 2, 2013 GTA 5, 2014 Advanced Warfare, 2015 Black Ops 3, 2016 Infinite Warfare, 2017 World War 2, 2018 Red Dead Redemption 2, 2019 The Modern Warfare Reboot, 2020 Animal Crossing New Horizons, 2021 Vanguard, and 2022's Modern Warfare 2. Now this data may not be 100% accurate, and I don't see official numbers for Vanguard and MW2, but going off this list, do you see a pattern? If Rockstar doesn't release a new game with the exception of Animal Crossing, COD will almost always be the top selling game that year. At the very least, it's close to the top of the list year after year. Think of some of the biggest games in the genre, Battlefield and Halo being two of the most common games compared to COD. Not even those games seem to come close to dethroning Call of Duty. So the question that remains is, what can kill Call of Duty? Take a look at Call of Duty as a whole. COD by design is extremely accessible. New players are able to pick up the game and easily learn how it works. It's a mindless arcade shooter at its core. Of course, there's some elements of a competitive focus, especially with the ranked modes. But year after year, the core mechanics are mostly the same, with some minor tweaks here and there. COD 4 basically created and popularized the formula of a create a class system, and since then it's been refined and tweaked, to varying success. I'm looking at you, World War II. But the core gameplay remains mostly the same. Run around, shoot things, play an objective. Of course, that's extremely simplified. There's a variety of play styles depending on the type of gun you're using, your perk loadout, and how aggressive you are as a player, as well as some new mechanics like leaning or mounting being added and adjusted every so often. But it shows how much COD knows what it is, usually. All of this is to say that COD found a formula that works, and at its core they stick with it with the biggest changes in the franchise being the addition of the advanced movement games, from Advanced Warfare through Infinite Warfare. And even then, those gains retained the core components that make a COD game enjoyable for the most part. Again, take a look at the original Modern Warfare, and compare it to a COD that just released. Of course, comparatively, it's a little bare bones, but it has all the core mechanics and laid the perfect groundwork for the COD games we have today. I mean, it's got a create a class system, albeit not as robust as what we have now, but you've got a variety of different weapons, attachments you can put on them given only one at a time. You have perks, lethals, tacticals. There's different ways to play with the original Modern Warfare. And while, yes, there's no sliding, there's no diving, slide canceling, mechanics like that, tax sprint, it still retains what COD is. And you can go back and play the original Modern Warfare or Modern Warfare 2019 and see how it progressed over the years and see how it still has that core identity. Now of course, some COD games will do less stellar critically, with most recently being 2021's COD Vanguard, but what some people don't seem to realize is that a COD that flops still crushes sales numbers. Even if it doesn't meet Activision's expectations, the releases are always high selling. Yes, of course, Steam numbers and Twitch viewers can be an indication of how well a game is doing, but it's not the end-all be-all. The number of viewers or players may drop, but at its core, the COD fan is a casual gamer. Not everybody's watching streams or playing on a PC. A sizable chunk of the audience is people playing on a couch with their console. So yeah, you can look at the subreddits, Twitter, or other social media platforms. Reception to a release may be subpar. But I can assure you that game is going to sell more than most other games that year, and something that a lot of developers would kill for to have those types of sales numbers. Because at its core, the COD fanbase doesn't care about all of that. They want to come home after work and casually play a game where they run around shooting people, which COD executes perfectly in most cases. 
The gunplay is usually really well refined. The maps can be hit or miss, but they're easy to learn. There's camos, ranks, guns to grind for. There's enough content to hold the casual player over. And if they unlock everything, then the core gameplay is usually good enough where people still want to play. I myself can go back to a COD game that I have all the camos unlocked in, and I'll still have a fun time, even if I don't have anything specific to work for. Because the core gameplay in and of itself is that good. And that's one of the things that keeps COD as the juggernaut that it is. That core gameplay loop. Yes, it's a very casual game, but that makes it so accessible and a lot of fun to play. Something that not every game has. Take a look at Battlefield, for example. Probably one of the closest comparisons to COD since they're both first-person military shooters and pretty large franchises in their own right. Battlefield centers around large-scale battles, those big, grandiose moments that can only happen in a Battlefield game. And while I have a ton of fun playing Battlefield, I can understand why some people don't like it. Sometimes it feels like you're running around for minutes on end without seeing anybody because some of these maps are so massive. Now, of course, the gunplay in Battlefield is really well done too, but something about the simplicity of COD just makes it that much better in my eyes. I'm not saying that Battlefield is a bad game or that it's too hard, but COD is just a super simplified version of that in a smaller scale if you really break it down. And then look at a game like Halo, another juggernaut of the gaming industry. It's a game that is also pretty casual with a heavy competitive scene, but Halo has a lot more health. There's shield, armor, and regular old health to worry about, different types of projectile weapons, whether it be plasma or regular old bullet kinetic. Halo has a lot more at play that you have to think about when you're playing the game. There's utilities to it, whereas COD is bullet weapons. Do you want something that's going to one-shot somebody from a range? Use a sniper. Do you want to get up close and personal? Use a submachine gun or a shotgun. There's a little bit less to really think about in Call of Duty. That's why some people really say it's a brain-dead game. It's super casual. You don't really need to think too much to play Call of Duty. Whereas in playing Battlefield, you need to think about these bigger moments and how you're getting to these objectives. And in Halo, you got to think about how you're going to take down these enemies because their health pool is so large. Where in COD, you can die by a few shots. And that's not to say that Call of Duty is a completely mindless game. Of course there are some skill gaps and a lot of thought processes that can go into a regular old game of COD in a casual sense. I mean, take a look at the pro leagues or even just the higher skilled players. There's a lot that goes into just a regular old game of COD, whether that be Team Deathmatch or Search and Destroy. You gotta take things into account like what gun is best, what kind of attachments are you needing, what's your perks that you're gonna use, your equipment, your lethals. There's a lot that can go into it. You need to know what map you're playing. Are there good rotation points, good choke points? Do you know the spawns? There's a lot of things that can go into just a casual game of Call of Duty. So yeah, it's not always mindless, but you can also play COD while being mindless. You can just sit back, relax, and enjoy playing the game casually. But of course, there is a skill gap. But it's that ability to play this game casually and mindlessly that kind of gives it that mass appeal. Yes, there is a skill gap, but you can just run around shooting things if you really want to. You don't necessarily have to have an objective in mind or some grandiose plan for how you're playing the game. Of course, a lot of games you can do this in, but COD lends itself perfectly to doing that. Then there's the release of Warzone, the free-to-play battle royale. While not being the most innovative battle royale in the genre, it still nails the core gunplay really well. It's what keeps me coming back. The gunplay in COD is hardly matched by any other games we see today. Something about it just feels so good and fluid. The ease of access and the ability to master the movement and guns is what helps keep COD alive. Maybe Warzone 2 isn't as well received as its first try, but it still feels really good and I have a ton of fun playing it. And I can go back and play a different Battle Royale, whether that be Apex Legends or PUBG, and I can have a ton of fun playing them. But for a few games, it's going to feel a little bit off. Whether that be the movement mechanics or the gunplay, something about it just doesn't feel right until you get used to it. But if I'm loading up into Warzone or just a casual game of COD, I know exactly what I'm getting into. COD has relatively stayed the same for the past 20 years. Movement-wise, things have changed, and gunplay-wise, it has changed, but it's always been so easy to access and easy to get used to. COD's super casual core fan base is what helps keep it alive. It doesn't hurt that they found a formula that works, and they keep refining it. 
Year after year, minor tweaks will be added. More refined gunplay, movement, customization. There's always something changing year after year to help keep the game fresh. I mean, I know the basic joke about the COD games are that they're all just reskins of each other, and not much is different, and in some aspects that is true. A lot of the COD games are very similar, but that's by design, because they know it works. But they keep it just different enough to keep people coming back. And with the brand longevity and recognition, the only real thing that can kill Call of Duty is itself. And I don't think that's happening anytime soon.